dernier. And so you have a YouTube channel uh, called it it Young Crip TV, is that right? That is correct. When did you start your YouTube channel? It was around this time, uh, about a year ago now, actually. What made, you want to do. what made you want to start doing YouTube? Um, well, to be honest, at the time, I, I really wasn't even doing anything uh, with life, and I was just kind of stuck in that notion of, like, trying to figure out something but not really knowing what to do. And uh, I watched a lot of YouTube at the time, and around that era was the uh, the commentary community when that was on the popularity list, uh, back when Leafy was relevant and stuff. <laughs> so... Is that uh, your goal, to be the next Leafy? I'm, I'm trying to be the crippled Leafy, actually. <laughs> but it's cool, because I can make fun of people without them judging me. Because I'm in a wheelchair, so it's all right. There you go. That's always nice to have that extra ace in your yeah. pocket. <laughs> and so, like, I just started doing a video because I started communicating more with uh, the community on Twitter and Discord. And they were like, you should try it out. And now I'm here. Nice. Well, so we, you'd reach out, and we were talking about, talking about, oh, man, that was, I don't know what just happened. Uh, we're we're going to talk about Baby Driver today. Yes. Have you you've seen Baby Driver, right? Yeah, I actually just got done watching it again with my mother. Oh, nice. What is your opinion? Like, what's your overall opinion on it? Well, as far as uh, movies this time of, like, everything's either a reboot or an adaptation yeah. anymore. So to have something, like, actually coming from a creative mind that wasn't adapted from anything already was really refreshing and I, I loved it a lot yeah I I enjoyed it I really liked watching it it was like it's a it's a fun watch but the story yeah. I felt was kind of lacking oh yeah yeah I think that the story is pretty uh, ABC yeah. you know kind of kind of typical. What was your what's your favorite part of the movie? I think the beginning half really was strong for me because it let you it let you feel uh, the characters out pretty well, especially Baby, and he, he's got this like a almost Ferris Bueller vibe to him, mm. and I I find that fascinating. Yeah, because his whole life was very orchestrated. It felt, but. It was uh, it was unique to see because of Edgar Wright's like visual uh, style of how he does things. Yeah, and it's just very strong at the beginning. Yeah, I love Edgar Wright. <laughs> yeah, uh, Edgar Wright is great. Uh, most of the stuff he's done, I I really enjoy the Coronado trilogy. You got uh, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, uh, The World's End, but I, I feel like those get progressively worse. Um, like, I think Hot Fuzz is the strongest, or not Hot Fuzz, uh, Shaun of the Dead, and then Hot Fuzz, and then The World's End. And I would say Baby Driver is on the bottom of that list for me, out of those four. Yeah, definitely. I, I would agree. I would definitely agree, because his, uh, I, yeah, like you said, Shaun of the Dead, definitely my favorite. Hot Fuzz right under that. I would put uh, Baby Driver above World's End, though. Yeah, that's fair. That movie, it's good. It's just, it's it's kind of a weird one. I think, um, but with Baby Driver, the the driving, the action, all that stuff was definitely the focus. And you, it, it oh, yeah. shows. It's very well done. It's, it, it's amazing what they were able to do, how they were able to time everything up with the music and do all this mm. stuff. I just think it would have been much better as a music video than a movie. I mean, that's kind of what it was. It's kind of a two-hour-long music video. You know what? When you put it that way, I didn't think of it, but yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> like the when he's walking the first time to get coffee, 
and yeah. you see all the words in the background and stuff like that. That felt very much just like a just a straight up music video, and which is cool. It's it's really impressive, but in a movie for me, I don't know. I I enjoy when I can get lost in a story when I'm like I can just kind of forget about everything else and I things don't stand out to me that like oh that's a clear choice by the director or that's a a weird choice or whatever. In this movie, that happened a lot where there's like. Oh, that's interesting. That's kind of weird that they would put that there. You know, like different, different little things here and there. And uh, it, while impressive, it still it just kind of took me out of the movie. Yeah, no, I, I I get where you're coming from because it felt like it wanted to be a musical, but it also didn't. And yeah. that that I thought was at any point in time, it felt like they were going to start breaking out into a musical number. And I mean, in a way, they kind of do because of the the music in when Baby's getting really into it. But uh, otherwise, yeah, you're right. It kind of borderlines that, like, is this reality? Do you, like, do you kind of thing? Yeah. Where, yeah. yeah there, it can be a bit confusing. Yeah, there's a few times where the time jumps so aggressive. It's like, Wait, is this actually happening, or is this just an interesting way of doing a time jump? Like, like what? Okay, so yeah. when he he walks into the coffee shop in the beginning, and he talks, he like orders the coffee. Like he walks in, and the guy's like, "What do you want?" Like instantly, it was like, yeah. "Well, that was jarring." Like that either that guy's just a really big jerk or hates this guy, but it just seemed like it just felt so uh, backwards from. Yeah. What what would you say this movie is about overall? What do you think the the message or the theme of this movie is? Um Okay, so it's about a a a guy who apparently in that this was one thing that kind of threw me off. They really kind of prolonged telling what happened with baby and uh Kevin Spacey's character mm. for some reason I don't know why that kind of bugged me yeah it was I, I didn't it, and even when they said it it didn't feel like that that was worth waiting that long for it was like okay why didn't they just bring that up somehow at the beginning yeah they <laughs> they allude to it being much deeper than it actually turns out to be yeah so basically this uh this guy tried to rob Kevin Spacey at one point and Kevin was like, hey, dude, I'm pretty impressed. I want to see what this guy can do. Becomes a... Uh, so he chases him down and says, hey, you're going to be my go-to getaway driver guy uh, because you stole from me. And once you do so many jobs, uh, I'll maybe we'll be even. And so this guy is just a really amazing driver. And it's about how uh, he either gets out or doesn't. What do you? How did you feel about Kevin Spacey in this movie? Uh, I mean, he did okay. Yeah. I, like, he played Kevin Spacey. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I can't stand him. Like I, in this movie, he comes off so pretentious, and I know that's his character, but it also feels like a choice. Like yeah, um, I, that's another thing I have with movies in general is like when you have. It's hard for me to know if the actor's doing a good job or not when the character is supposed to be annoying. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Like, he's just so frustrating to listen to, and he, like, he talks like he's almost doing slam poetry, like, when he gives a speech about, um, uh, baby getting in a car crash, and he's got the hum and the drum and all that stuff, it's just like, oh, well, people don't talk this way, like, and it just feels so opposite of his personality, it just, it felt very ham-fisted, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it, it, he... Gave a what felt like he was trying to do at some points, what he does in uh, House of Cards. Okay, yeah, that's I haven't seen House of Cards. Um, I heard it's great, but I that's what I kind of thought his character was playing off of of that like very calm, collected psychopath. Yeah, that's that's very much kind of what it is. He very cool, collected, but when shit hits the fan, it's like. Whoa, <laughs> he's serious. Yeah. What did you think of his death at the end? 
Uh, that felt very, like, anticlimactic almost. Yeah. I don't know. It felt very, like, they, they built up that very end of the relationship of, like, oh, Kevin does care about him. And then immediately he just dies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, it, I don't know. The, because so Kevin Spacey was upset with Baby for, what was it? He just kind of, like, gave up. He was, like, getting away and trying to take off, right? And yeah, he yeah. He was coming back to get his tape back of his mom, and Kevin was like, "No, you're like, you know, I'm I'm not on your side." And then the girl walks in, and he's like, "Oh, young love, okay, I'm gonna step in front of a car for you now." Like yeah, the the switch was very dramatic and felt uh, very forced. Like it didn't, it wasn't very clear why that all would happen that quickly to me, at least. I don't know. Yeah, it was really weird, because it was like, did that imply that Kevin was kind of like a father figure, like he saw himself as like his father in a way? I mean, because it felt like very parental. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And the way that he talks about maybe, it feels like, yeah, that's my kid. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if, if he, if that's what that implied, but even then it felt really kind of out of nowhere. And then ended abruptly. Yeah. Well, what do you think about the other characters? You got John Berthold, John Hamm. Uh, what's his name? Why can't I think of his name? The black Jamie guy. Jamie Foxx. Yeah, Jamie Foxx. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I kept wanting to say Jamie Kennedy, and I was like, that's definitely not right. Yeah, Mel Lewis must have wanted it was a wild man. <laughs> what do you think about the, the side characters? Um... Some of them felt very cut out. Like, that's... This is what I expect from, like, a, a heist. Uh, like, I think it was John Hamm and, uh, what's her name? His, his like, girlfriend. Those yeah, two. Darlene is her name uh, in the movie. I can't... I don't know That's right. Name. In real life. It, those two felt kind of Bonnie and Clyde-y. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that feels about right. I think the only... Oh, and then, uh... What's his name? He plays uh, Punisher. Uh, John Berthal. Yeah, and he played the very stereotypical like what he does best, <laughs> the badass that's like a little. He's got that like I'm I'm not right in the brain. Yeah, kind of thing. That's kind of all uh, of his characters. Yeah, in Shane yeah. in Fury in Punisher in this, they're all kind of. The same. Like, I don't know if he's just typecast or if that's just what he likes to do. Right. Well, I mean, he does it. He does it well. Yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, he was all right. I mean, again, I kind of knew what to expect from him. The only one I think that brought a little something was Jamie. See, I found him more obnoxious. While I was watching it, he felt. I don't know. Tonally, he felt so different than everything else that he like stood out to me so much more, because he yeah. was he was like a crazy person, right? Like, yep. And he just felt, I don't know. I I, I think I saw Jamie Fox more than I saw his character, and uh, I don't know. I I think doing podcasts and being critical of movies has been making me like movies less <laughs> than I used to, because I I <laughs> notice things. Uh, longer than I think I would have before. I feel like that's fair, though. But, uh, huh. th this movie, I, I actually missed it, uh, when it came out in theaters. It, it didn't come through my town, um, and it was like, I think I saw it at the beginning of this year. It was either the end of last year, like in December or beginning of this year, that I finally ended up seeing it, um. And there was a huge hype over everything about how great it is. And, like, it's just so amazing that I went in with this really high expectation. And I felt like it, it did not meet that expectation. Which is generally anything that has hype and I go and see, my expectation is always higher than the quality of the movie. Right. I feel like that's a big problem yeah. these days. Uh, one of the biggest issues that films have, I feel like there's two of them, uh, misleading trailers and uh, overhype. Yeah. That those are the two worst things that can really kill a movie. 
Yeah, and I, I feel like it. They both play to the Comic Con audience, basically. Yep. You know, like the people who are going to get excited and break trailers down and like really dissect that stuff, and you like start building like, oh, this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen. Like you see it with um, the latest Star Wars movie. I don't know if you've seen that yet or not, but it. I have not. It was so built up that there was really nothing that could have, you know, met that expectation. Yeah, it. I feel people do that to themselves, it, and it's so bad because, like, I I have a rule with myself that I only will watch a trailer for a movie once, mm -hmm. and if that trailer interests me at all, I will be like, all right, I will go see that movie. And after that, I just kind of turn off my brain to, like, anything else. Yeah. Because I uh, have that in mind. Like, yes, okay, that's on my new watch list. And I, I haven't been disappointed in a movie for a little bit now just because I'm like, all right, I'm going to go in with just, I'm ready to see whatever happens. Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> a good a good rule. I, uh, I watched some of the trailers that came out for uh, during the Super Bowl. Yes. I'm trying to think of what they were. It was like uh, The Lost World 2, which looks awful. Uh, yeah. Solo. It, it, it was very f***ing like... The first one was very uh, kind of slow-paced, but then it picked up with the action and whatever. But this one looks like it's just way into the f***ing... Like, there's dinosaurs in the house. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so bad. <laughs> um, Solo, the Star Wars Solo movie... The yes. Han Solo looks so boring. I don't know. I like, I'm guessing you're not a big Star Wars fan if you haven't hadn't seen the latest Star Wars yet. Well, uh, there's two issues. One, I probably would have waited anyways. Yeah. Uh, two, the uh, transportation issues, but it's whatever. The, yeah. Uh, the main point, though, with the Star Wars thing for me is that it used to be like a magical franchise that you know, when the new trilogy, not the uh, newest one, but the Phantom Menace, the, yeah. pre, the prequels, the prequels. Um, when that was announced, I was still a kid, but I remembered, like, the, like, hype and excitement, because it was like, oh my god, I thought they would never do that. Yeah. And now, it's like, we're gonna get a new Star Wars every year. It's, yeah, it's way too much. Yeah, and it's not. It doesn't feel special anymore. It feels like, uh, yeah, that, that's I guess that time of year, and it's gonna, it's gonna eventually ruin the the, the charm. Yeah, well, I I, I kind of feel that way already because we've had, uh, the Force Awakens, Rogue One, uh, the Last Jedi, and then now Solo, all within three years. Yep. So do you do you not get a chance to get out and go see movies in the theater very often, or at all? It's been a little over a year since my main source of transportation's been down. So as of lately, I don't see movies in theaters. But it used to be a pretty like, well, that that's kind of a, a stretch because there wasn't too many movies that actually caught my eye. Uh, it used to be at least in every other week thing because I do have a very big passion for for film. Mm. Do you find and that watching movies at home makes movies worse or better for you? Like, um, it definitely is not the same. There, yeah. There's a there's a magic, a movie magic, you know, mm -hmm. that you can't get from at home, no matter yeah. no matter what. Yeah, because I went, I went and saw The Last Jedi, the latest Star Wars. I saw it here in Thailand, and there was, like, two other people in the theater with me because it was the English viewing, and it was mm -hmm. at, like, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, I, so I didn't like The Last Jedi, but I don't know how much of that was because there was no energy in the room. You know, like, the when you go into, like, a packed theater and people are just excited and you can just, like, kind of fill it, you get yeah. there's like no choice but to get like sucked into the into all of that and uh absolutely when i saw the last jedi i was like well this is boring no you know what that that makes a lot of sense 
uh, I remember when The Dark Knight Rises was coming out. Yes. I went to the midnight premiere because I was a real big fan of the, the trilogies uh, so far. And uh, they were doing a special thing here where they played the first two movies and then at midnight they released The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. How was that? Did you, you watch all three of them? Yeah, and it was awesome because everybody there was like, like you said, so hyped and full of energy and ready that it just, it really made you like, in that moment, you're like, fuck yeah, this is the best movie ever goddamn made. I don't know if I could do one of those marathon viewings. I feel like it might kill me. It, it was It was something different for me. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Personally, I think it, to me, it felt like one big slumber party. Okay. And I thought that was cool. Yeah. Like, because <laughs> you hear about, like, the, uh, people will watch, like, the Lord of the Rings extended cuts. Yeah. And stuff like that, which is, it's like 12 hours of movie if you watch oh, yeah. all three. And it's like, oh, that sounds like a nightmare to me. Yeah, and I think it depends on the movie for me. Yeah. Like, I, I could I feel like I could do it with the Dark Knight trilogy just personally because yeah. I was uh, I'm a real big DC fan. Yeah. Uh, comics. The movies yeah, yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> the the movies are awful. They, They're just uh, all bad. I haven't seen Wonder Woman. I've seen all the other ones. I hear Wonder Woman is the best, but I'm like, I don't know. I what? like I can't. I just can't get myself interested in seeing it for some reason. I mean, a, a piece of shit that has like a little bit of chocolate is still a piece of shit. <laughs> that's a valid point. <laughs> that's, that's just my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like it stands out because everything else is so bad. But yeah. I, again, I haven't seen it, so I don't, I don't have a. I, yeah, it, it, again, everything all, all, to me, especially with the superhero genre, uh, genre I, it's just so constant that I'm burned out yeah. that nothing feels like interesting to me anymore yeah. even with the the new Avengers like I'm like uh... well, yeah well it doesn't look like it's gonna be any good no it, it feels it just looks like it's gonna be so packed and that pacing is gonna be so bad yeah well the, the Avengers 1 I felt was was pretty solid was a good movie yeah. Avengers 2 was like okay well this is kind of getting old like this doesn't feel special anymore and yep. now at this point i'm more interested in the solo movies not not han solo movie the yeah. the standalones uh and then seeing them all together again because it's so so uh compact or so like just busting at the seams you know oh yeah yeah i'm really interested in the uh Oh, I forgot what it was called, but they're doing like a an X Men movie, but it's like a horror movie. Yeah. Um, what is that called? It's uh, is it the Young something? No. Um, I know it. I don't remember. New Mutants? No. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. That looks like could be interesting. Is that still gonna happen? Do you have any idea? Because with Disney buying Fox. Right. Um, I assume sure. it probably is, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I would think it would still go through because if they're gonna do anything, um, I don't know if you've watched any uh, Legion. I so I've watched the first two episodes. Okay. And uh, it's it's cool. I I just like it's one of those things that I like just forgot about basically and now it's been so long I'm just like Meh, I don't know <laughs> yeah no that's completely fair the, uh, it's I would recommend it it's a great great show uh, and it was so well done that really you wouldn't even guess that uh, it was technically a thing about the X-Men until near the end of the series otherwise you could just kind of look at it as a its own science fictiony thing. Yeah. And I thought that was cool. Like, now they're going to start bringing up the vaccine and stuff a bit more, but it's really done in an artsy way, and there are, like, elements of horror in it because it plays on, like, 
psychology in, in the mind. Yeah. Uh, that it would be a good psychological horror movie, I feel. The yeah. aspects of that. <laughs> well, getting back to Baby Driver, is there anything right. that you <laughs> would change? Was there uh, so- something that stands out to you that you're like, oh, I wish they would have done this different, or if I was in charge, I would have done this different? Um, hmm. What would I... You know, there was one... There was one little bit that kind of stuck out to me. A little bit of a plot hole. Um, when Baby was explaining to the rest of the crew that uh, he records conversations to make music with them, Yes. Obviously, it makes sense that they didn't believe him at first. They, they're skeptical. <clears throat> but he he says, no, blah, 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 make music. And they're like, all right, we're going to your fucking house. And then they go to his house, and then it jumps to him, like, uh, being questioned and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. He had all that music recording stuff in his room. Yeah. They didn't need to go and all the way did- back. Yeah, it seems like an easy... An easy yeah, solve. Like, but yet, but like they they still play with him. Yeah. Like and can beat his <laughs> goddamn uh, mute uh, death <laughs> in a wheelchair and left him on the ground. Even though like once they looked in his room, they would have been like, oh, music recording equipment. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe he's telling the truth. It's a little weird, but he's telling the truth. Yeah. Well, for Jamie Foxx's character. He was willing to kill that other guy because I'm trying to think. Was it because he didn't have a mask on, or because he left his shotgun, or he left a bag of? Because he left his shotgun. That's left his right. shotgun. Yeah, and uh, I think Jamie Fox doesn't care, and so just having a recording of stuff, he's like, "Nah, I'm done Enough. with you." Like, yeah, like I, I'm gonna, you need to die, basically. Yeah, um, that makes sense. But yeah, no it. The whole, again, the, all the the driving, all the action, all that stuff was done so well. It's kind Maybe. of surprising that the story felt so weak. That the the motivations and the characters, the way they would make decisions, felt very just forced. Um, yeah. Because all the conflicts, like Jamie Fox was a crazy person, so he could just do whatever. But then you had uh, John Hamm's character who was just kind of controlled by his girlfriend and Kevin Spacey was one note until the end and I, I don't know it just it it just felt very everything felt very forced none of the none of the catalysts for character decisions felt like they were earned it just felt like you know what now is time that something happens so I'm going to push this button and it's going to happen yeah you know whose character really bothered me now that you mentioned it which one? Uh, Deborah. Deborah. <laughs> she she uh, would... Oof. Like, okay, she was just a girl that white had a little bit of a crush on Baby, and some weird shit was happening. I think she had suspicions, but as soon as it came down to like, all right, I saw you shot a man in front of me, and obviously there's some serious shit because there's cops everywhere. Yeah, you know what? Take me with you. Yeah. Well, she was down just to run away with him, like, before before everything got real crazy, which, yeah. okay, I get that a little bit. Like, it, when you watch the movie, it feels like they knew each other for, like, a week, and she was down to run away with him. That's That's one thing, but then when things start going crazy and you know, like, oh, he's involved in something, like, super sketch, like, yeah. okay... You should step out of that. Like, you know what? I, That's me. You know, I, I can't be I can't be a part of this. But she doesn't. And then it goes even further to where she waits for him to get out of prison. And it's like, yeah. th- that's a that's like too many steps into, like, implausible for me to, like, really buy. Yeah, that's why it was. As soon as, like, she, she wasn't like, bro, I, I knew you were, like, bad, but I didn't know you were, like... FBI bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, maybe you should do your own thing. I'm going to be here. Well, wasn't she about to ram the police at the end? Yeah. And he, like, stops her? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, she was ready to be like, you know what, we'll fuck die together. And he's like, dude, 
you don't belong in this world, just like yeah. Dad said to him. So, like, uh, call oh. back. But, like, even then, it still felt weird. Yeah. I wish the ending would have been Baby getting out of prison 50 years later and her still waiting for him. Right. And then him just being old like Kevin Spacey. Just, I think that would have been a funny way to end it. I mean, it would have been more tragic, but I think it would have been a, a funny choice. I thought they were going to go the, uh, the Devil's Rejects ending. What's that? For a minute where, like, they, they kind of just look at each other and they're like, ah, there's no way out of this one. And then, like, they just go out in a blaze of glory, <laughs> pretty much. And they just fucking die and get yeah. shot. Yeah, so if I were to change anything about this movie, I think I would leave most of the action again. I, I, I know this is the third time I've said it, but I would leave all that stuff the same. And maybe not have Edgar Wright... Like, I had to have Edgar Wright focus on that and have someone else focus on the story. Because that, that definitely seems like his focus was just on making a cool, you know, heist movie. But he didn't yeah. seem to care about the motivations. And I think if you add in, you know, I'm sure he had other writers and stuff, but I, I, I just feel like if there was someone else's vision for the motivations of why this stuff was happening, I think it could have been a lot stronger. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not the person to write that. That's why I don't have any good ideas of what would, what would, what would have made better sense. But there's got to be a better story to move all the plots along. You know, like there's, I, I don't know, I, I, I hate, I don't like just to like nitpick on something like, oh, this is bad, this is lazy, whatever. But like, that's just how I felt when I was watching. I was like, man, this this is so cool, and the other side of this coin is so lacking that it it makes it hard to enjoy the cool stuff. No, I get what you mean. Like, it, at times it felt like it was almost trying to be kind of a comic book with how everybody had like their own little quirk or like character thing. That felt a little like forced, like, yeah. like all right, this is that guy. Remember that. <laughs> all right. Well, can you tell me about your YouTube channel again? Yeah, it's uh, just Young Crip TV. Um, I just kind of have a smorgasbord of all sorts of uh, different types of videos, ranging from different types of commentary to. Uh, movie reviews, which I plan on doing a lot more of. Yeah. what What's your favorite... What would you say is your top three movies so people can get a, a taste of... or an understanding of what your taste is? Top three movies. Um, okay, so I definitely like SLC Punk. Okay. It's a more indie Sony film. Yep. Uh, really good. I loved it. But uh, then... The Blair Witch Project. It's my favorite horror movie. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, I know. That one's either people like that one or they, they hate it. Yeah. Um, and then my third one is probably... Uh, I really liked End of the Wild. That was a beautiful movie. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. It was great talking yeah, to you absolutely. about Baby Driver. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was. I enjoyed it. But yeah, so if you guys want to follow us, you can find us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod and pretty much anywhere else. I Seen That. All right.